this is evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. There's been a lot of craziness going on after Donald Trump's inauguration. All these marches and protests and I'm like, really? I mean, I understand protesting, but they're not protesting. They're rioting. They're rioting. They're not protesting. I don't see how it can be called rioting. I mean, protesting. When they're busting out windows. They're, they're spitting in police officers' faces. They're, they're destructing private property. But yet they call it protesting. God's Word says in uh, 2 Timothy 3, But know this, then the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Let me change my page here. Slanders without self-control. Right there. Without self-control. They have no self-control. They say they're uh, protesting, but they get out of control and they start writing. Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, hearty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power, and from such people turn away. And also, right here in uh, 2 Timothy 4, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, at his appearing, the second coming, that would be the parousia, and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exult, with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up themselves, teachers, and they will turn their eyes away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But be watchful in all things, endure uh, afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Right there, it says, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. What? Is the work of an, of an evangelist. Well, someone says the Great Commission is the work of, of an evangelist. To go out is the work of an evangelist. No, preaching is the work of an evangelist. And teaching is the work of an evangelist. So right here. Preach the word. And it also says, um, 
teaching as well. Preaching and teaching is the work of an evangelist. But some people don't want to be taught the truth. They, they just want to stay in their form of their truth. And, uh, oh well, who cares about the truth? They don't want to hear me say anything about my personal problems that I've been going through, like my health problems. Like, for instance, having to be on insulin because I'm a diabetic and not because I'm a diabetic by my own choosing, but because it is in my genes on my mother's side of the family. And cancer is on my dad's side of the family. So does that mean... What, you know, come on. Uh, is it my fault that I might get cancer? Because my grandmother, my dad's mother had cancer. My uh, dad's sister had cancer. My, my dad's two brothers had cancer. Does that mean that if I get cancer, then it's my fault? Like a lot of people want to say, well, year, it's your fault that you got diabetes. It's not my fault that I got diabetes. Try to eat right. But when your sugar is going low, you end up picking up peanut butter and eating peanut butter straight out of the jar so your sugar goes high, uh, back up again. And uh, I also have spina bifida occulta, occulta, which means closed spina bifida. And if you check it out, it will say that many people don't even know they have spina bifida occulta until they have an x-ray. There's no tail, as somebody said, that will be cut off at birth. I don't know where they get this, get this at. I don't know where they get all this at. You know, it's like, are you pulling it out of the sky somewhere? You're basically making making it sound like everybody that has spina bifida occulta ends up growing a tail and that has to have it cut off. Or spina bifida is something that is seen as soon as the baby comes out of the womb. No, you cannot tell spina bifida occulta when the baby comes out of the womb. Have mercy on their souls, Lord, for saying all those lies that they like to say. I worked for over 10 years. I paid into Social Security and Medicaid. But yet there's people out there still says, well, if you don't show it, then it's not true. I don't have to show you anything except the fact, hey, if you, if you, if you're not as stupid as you think you are, And if you know what I mean by that, you think you're smart, but yet you're stupid. You will. Uh, you should understand. You have to work ten years before you can get Medicaid. I mean Medicare. You have to work ten years to get Medicare. Okay. I. Medicaid, 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 Medicaid. It's all government conspiracy. When it comes right down to it, they take it out of your paycheck. But then when you need it, half the time it's not even there for you. 
it's like soldiers when they uh, go uh, and fight for our country and they're done fighting and they want medical coverage they gotta go to a VA hospital or a VA clinic to get free care, well for to get the care that is under their VA insurance well long story short I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you're a veteran how hard it is sometimes to get accurate medical care like what was in the news recently about uh, the VA hospitals basically make an appointment for people and not calling them in waiting until basically they're dead before they're called in and I feel that was going on here recently with Renee and my uh, issues that we've been having with uh, Medicaid is the same way they're, they're, they're trained to say that they're not going to pay for things that my Part D Medicare doesn't pay for. But I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. This doesn't make no sense. The book, the book, the, the book right here, the, the 2017 book from uh, Medicare. The 2017 book here from Medicare says right here under and on page 100 and 101. Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that helps pay medical costs if you have limited income and resources. To meet other requirements, some people qualify for both Medicare and Medicaid and are called dual eligibles. Then up here it says, If you have Medicare and full Medicaid coverage, which is what I have, Medicare covers your Part D prescription drugs Medicaid will cover some drugs in other care that Medicare doesn't cover but yet I'm being told no since I have Part D then Medicare it Medicaid isn't paying for what Medicare doesn't pay for I mean, wait a minute. This is that's different than what it says here. This says that uh, what Medicare, my Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage doesn't cover, Medicaid will cover. Hmm. But then they're telling me that. Uh, I don't know. I'm I am just so frustrated with them. It is beyond frustration. Cause this is right here in their handbook that they send me once a year. And it says the same thing over and over again. It says the same thing over and over again. But yet, when I went for my state hearing today, they just like, the rules are the rules. I'm like, yeah, but you're hiding behind rules. That's not even in here. I mean, where where's the rules in here? Where's the rules in here? And why aren't you going by the rules in the Bible? Really, when it comes right down to it, 
And the Bible says, if a brother or sister is in need, you help them. And but a lot of these people that's doing this to me and Renee are truly born again Christians, blood bought Christians. They think that they're going to go to heaven when they when the time comes. Christians. God have mercy on their souls because a Christian a, saying that my hands are tied, there's nothing I can do. I got good I got do all this evil to you. Even though I'm a Christian, so I can keep my job. What? It's more important, your soul or your job. Well, listen, I gotta get out here. I signed up already. God bless you. Have a blessed day.